Now, uh, in this session, as uh, I said at the end of the previous session, uh, I would give you the state transition table. And it's uh, you know, predicted there would be eight uh, state transition rules in this table, and there's a kind of lookup look up table that would allow you to predict the next state given the current state and and the nature of the signal input, right? So here, here it is. Now, uh, we can't see it, but in the previous session, we had a state diagram, and this is a table, right? And the diagram implicitly were those eight uh, state transition rules, and here it's made explicit in the term, in the form of a table, okay? So here you have two possible current states, and you only have two states in this very simple autom 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 automaton, uh, a, uh, an automatic door controller, an ADC, and uh, here you have your four possible uh, input signals, okay, so uh, four by two, so you have eight possible situations, um, combinations, if you like. Right. So, uh, how, do you, how do you interpret this? Well, if, in the following way. If the current state is closed and the input signal coming in is neither, then the next state is closed. So these, these eight here, these eight state labels, they are the next state, the, the eight possible next states. Okay. So let's do a few more, just keep getting the hang of it. So imagine the current state is open, in comes the signal rear, so, so you know, think, think of it as like a matrix. Uh, so that, that would be like the row label for your matrix. And that, here's your matrix, it's a two by four matrix. Okay? Uh, typical uh, state transition tables are in the form of a matrix. Okay? So uh, what do I say? Uh, current state open, input signal rear, so you're along this row and this column, and, you, and they intersect here. So that uh, that next that would be your next state. Right? So if open and rear, then open. Okay, and you can do that for all all possible uh, eight combinations. So that that is your state transition table. So why transition? Well, you're transitioning from one state to another. That's what transition means, trans, across, you know, from one to another, like a bridge, okay, trans. All right, now uh, this automatic door control, this, this controller is a very simple computer. It just has one bit of memory, right? one, one bit. And what's that memory needed for? Well, to, to remember which of the two states that it's in, okay? So for example, if the if the bit is set at zero, that might correspond to, to closed. And if it's set at one, that might correspond to open. Okay. Now, uh, now that's a, the, this ADC, this automatic door controller, is a very simple example of an automaton, uh, a finite state machine, same thing. Uh, it has a finite number of states, in this case just two, right? and a small number of input signals, uh, four, four different ones. Okay? Now, there are other devices, uh, also uh, finite state machines, uh, that you're familiar with, and there's a whole range of them. Um, for example, uh, well, say, say you're uh, an electrical mechanical engineer, a systems engineer, you, you design whole systems, and you're asked to design, well, if you went back a few decades, quite a few decades, um, you were asked to design a control system, a controller for an elevator, you know, an elevator in, in a building. Uh, now, Americans say elevator, the British say lift, I've lived in both cultures. Uh, I suspect the reason why uh, the Americans say elevator is, no, it's just a hunch on my part, I'm not sure. 
is that they took that term from uh, the French. And you know, an elevator in French is, uh, actually it's ascenseur. Oh, forget that theory. <laughs> the French word for elevator is ascenseur, which is to ascend. So maybe, maybe they did invent it. I was going to say that they took it from the French, that the French invented it uh, and called it elevateur, and then uh, the Americans anglicized it. So I, I, don't know who, I don't know which country invented it. But yeah, ascenseur is the French word for elevator, because I speak French. Right, and the British, the British just say lift, because you know, that's what it's doing, it's lifting. So uh, it's always easier. So I think Australians also say lift. Hong Kong also lift. Yeah, so a lot of colonies, probably New Zealand, I don't know, but probably New Zealand also says lift. Anyway, American elevator, uh, British lift. Okay. So uh, imagine you're, you're, as an engineer, you're asked to design a controller for an elevator lift. Uh, so you probably have uh, states for each floor. You know, the the, the uh, state seven that might correspond to the elevator being on level seven, you know, the seventh floor, okay, uh, and uh, what would the input signals be? Well, they might be uh, people pressing pressing buttons in the elevator, you know, they, they get in and they press uh, 38, they want to go to floor number 38, imagine they're in New York or something, or, or 98, <laughs> okay, so, right, so they, the input signals might be, uh, you know, correspond to pressing uh, buttons in, in the elevator. Right now, uh, your the number of states you have in such a an elevator controller uh, would probably be a lot more than one. Okay, so your controller, your whole system, your finite automaton would be more complex because more states, more input signals, and hence uh, the combination of those two, a lot more. You probably have a lot more um, state transition rules. Right? So your state transition table would be much bigger and more complex and so forth. So you know, but, but still, a finite number of states, a finite number of uh, input signals, a finite number of uh, state transition rules, uh, you know, a, uh, a state transition table of finite size, so a finite automaton, okay? and the plural, uh, a finite automata, which is the topic uh, of this first section of this chapter, 1.1, finite automata. I can see it uh, two, two sessions previously. You can't see it, but it's sort of that way. All right, so here's some examples of uh, controllers that, that are effectively uh, finite automata. You know, for example, you know, dishwashing machines, thermos, you know, electronic thermostats, digital watches, calculators, they're, they're all in their computers uh, with a, a limited memory. Okay? Now, to design such things, you would need knowledge and be familiar with the theory, the concepts, the, the terms, and the methods of how to manipulate them of um, finite automata, you know, or finite state machines, FSM, same thing. Remember, finite automata and finite state machines are just, uh, they're synonymous. They're, they're just two different labels for the same concept. Okay. They're synonymous. Alright, now, uh, these finite state machines, uh, they, they, can, they can have other purposes. Like we've been talking about um, electromechanical type devices so far. But uh, they, they can be used for other very useful uh, applications, purposes. Uh, for example, uh, they might be used to, to recognize patterns in, in data. Uh, for example, uh, speech processing. You know, you're trying to detect uh, patterns in the data, uh, like words. You, know, you, you're, you, you have a machine that is listening to human